All right, in uh, number 33 here, uh, we're going to be doing the same thing, which is to say we've got some forces acting on our object, and we want to reduce those to a single force acting in a particular location, okay? And so I've gone ahead here and defined those two forces for us uh, and found out what the resultant was. And you can see it's 12 minus 11. So let's go ahead and get the moment for these two forces. And um, I'm going to scooch my screen around a little bit. So M1, all right, that force... And we're back. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Technical issues. Um, the force F1 is going to produce a particular moment. And it's over a distance of 2 meters. And it has a magnitude of 2. And it's going to be in the clockwise direction. So, so we put negative for clockwise. A distance of 2. A uh, magnitude of 20. And so that's a minus 40. Now, the other force um, has got X and Y components to it, so we have to break it down. I mean, we, we could do it different ways. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it into its horizontal and compo vertical components. Um, you could just throw it into something that will work the cross product for you. Um, either way is just fine, but I'm going to do it with components here. So if I think about the X component, the X component is over here. There's my fx, f2x, really. And it's up a distance to its line of action. And it's also going to be negative. So I'm going to have negative 2 onto the x component, which is 12. But then the y component is up here. And it's out there at a distance of 6. And it's positive. So I'm going to, I would put plus 6 onto 9. And that turns out to be equals to 30 when you run the, the numbers on that. And so my resultant moment, so to speak, is actually uh, negative 10. Okay. So that means this the, the two forces acting together want to try and twist this thing in a clockwise fashion there. All right. Okay. Well, um, Let's proceed just exactly like we've done before. All right. Now I'll, I'm going to take a second here and move some of my numbers out of the way a little bit. Give myself a little bit more room. Okay. But if we proceed how we have, like we did in the last time, what we said is we said that the, the resultant moment... was going to be some distance times the magnitude of the resultant force. Okay? And we need it to be negative this time. So that's negative um, 10. And so D is just going to be 10 divided by the magnitude. So we're looking at 10 over 16.3. And that turns out to be... 0.614, okay? And we might kind of feel, we might be tempted to feel like, hey, mission accomplished, we're all done. Yeah, not, not really, actually. that Because that number, 0.614, it, it's actually not helpful at all, okay? Let me get rid of my blue arrow here, and I'll show you what I mean. Get rid of that guy, too. Um, because our... Resultant force is actually almost 45 degrees down. Okay, take a look at that. It's it's over 12 and down 11. So 45-ish. Okay, something really close to that. Which means it's it basically it it's sitting in here. Well, not quite that steep. It's sitting in here. Um, something like that. Okay. So what did we get? 
with our point 0.614, what does that really tell us? Well, here's what that actually tells us. My force, and I'm going to move it just a little bit here. I want it in a slightly different spot just for illustrative purposes. But my force is acting along a certain line of action. Okay, and that line of action is coming all the way through here like that. And we know that as long as that force is on a, a particular line of action, then you can have any old moment arm here. And it's going to give you the same amount of moment. Okay, put that force on the line of action anywhere. Calculate the moment, it will be the same value. Okay, so what did we actually find? What we found was none of those which I've drawn. What we actually found was the shortest moment arm. This guy right here, where that's going to be a right angle, 90 degrees inside there. Okay. Because um, remember, when we, we calculate our moment, it's going to be the distance of the moment arm, the magnitude of the force, sine theta. So sine theta is a max at 90 degrees, which means my moment arm is the smallest at that point. Okay. Um, so I, I guess if we wanted to, wanted to know something like what's the distance of closest approach of our line of action, we got it. Okay. But that's not what we're asked to find. What we're asked to find is how far from A do we need to put our line of action? All right. The result, look, read it carefully. Specify where the resultant's line of action intersects the horizontal segment measured from A. So in other words, what we need is we need whatever this location is here, where that line of action crosses um, the horizontal portion of our object. Okay. Now, it it might kind of seem like, wow, that is how we're going to come up with that. But actually, it's not. It's not. I'll show you. It turns out to be really straightforward. Let me get rid of the line of action. Okay. And uh, replace my dot. We said, you know, we said, okay, maybe it's going to be here somewhere. Let's draw in the resultant right there. Let's just put it right there. Let's put its tail right there. Now, if we think about the components of our resultant, we've got a horizontal component here and a vertical component here. Now, let me ask you, of those two components, which one contributes a moment? Well, the, ho the horizontal one doesn't because right in that location, right there, the horizontal component is in line with the uh, pivot point, okay? And so that gets us a zero. So all we have to deal with really is the vertical part of it. So if we want to know, and we do, this distance here, Let's call that X. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to say that our um, resultant moment has to be equal to that X value times the magnitude of the Y component. All right, the magnitude of the Y component. And then we got to correct for whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise, and it's counterclockwise, which is this here. Okay, so that's my X times my F. And we want that X times FY to be equal, in this case, to minus 10. Mm. Okay, so now X then is going to be 10 over that Y component, which is 10 over 11. And that's like 0 0.9091, something like that. Okay, there we go. So let me back out of this just a little bit so you can see it all there. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so I got my pointer here. All right, so we followed the same procedure that we did for, from the one before. So we had to find out what's our resultant force, what's our resultant moment. Okay, we those are always our starting points in this uh, situation. Okay, and then we said, well, what if we just sort of blindly do it the way we did last time? Okay, use a D times the magnitude of the resultant. Okay, we can get a number. What was that number? Well, that number was the distance of closest approach to A. It was not the point of intersection, what we're calling X. Okay, to get that point of intersection X, we just use the Y component of our, our resultant. Um, and then it just pops right out. All right, there we go.